Welcome to the Minimasters, and today I'm going to show you how to add a little simple mod to your Dana 44 that will be a major game changer. So, a little lead up here. This is our Dana 44 from my twin traction beam 4x4 swap that I got going on here. And one thing you'll notice about this type of suspension is there's no real like diff cover, the actual beam is your cover. So I'm sure there's some pros and cons to that, but one of the immediate cons is whenever you have to drain this thing of fluid, you actually have to get like a little transfer pump, take out this uh, plug, put it inside and actually siphon it out. There's no way to just peel the cover off and let it drip out. Unless of course you want to uninstall the third member. So my mod is to add a little drain plug right here. All right, guys, so to get started, take your Dana 44 third member, lay it on its side. So this is the side that faces down towards the road. If you just need to check the little breather tube, which I've wrapped in tape there to keep the paint off it, should be facing down for this mod. You also notice this kind of shape in the case that just kind of protrudes out. And that's where I'm gonna put my hole. Now I have it this far back because the flange sticks that much further back from basically the cover, if you will. Uh, so that's where we're gonna put it, tools. So obviously I'm gonna put a 3 8 national pipe thread plug in there. So then I'll need my 3 8 by 18 national pipe thread tap, which will have to be paired with a 37 64 inch drill bit. And then I have a smaller drill bit here and I'll be using 11 64ths to basically start a hole to help kind of pilot the tip here so it doesn't uh, walk all over, as they say. I have a drill and I have some dirty oil. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by drilling a little pilot hole here with my much smaller drill bit, making sure that the drill bit is lubed up with the oil and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I'm all set up right here. Basically going to find my center here, kind of just eyeballing it. And I'm going to start drilling my pilot hole, trying to stay as straight on the work as possible. All right, so I've zoomed the camera out. You can see our pilot hole is ready to go. Let's talk drill settings, okay? So this is a really big drill bit, and I've been consulting with my brother who's a machinist, and he says, you want to run these slow. So he said for this size, about 500 RPM, which is pretty dang slow, okay? So on my Milwaukee drill here, just to achieve that, I've put this at number one. So typically you guys run it at two, so flip to one. And then I dialed this thing all the way back to three. He says it's safer to start slower and then maybe work your way up as you kind of visually take in the results. As far as chip, which is what a machinist calls all the chippings that you drill out, he says at slower speeds, and if you're doing it properly, you should see nice, long, continuous, like strings of steel coming out as opposed to little fragments and such. So dip your drill bit in some oil, keep it lubricated during the entire drilling process, and let's get going. So I took a quick pause to consult with the machinist. He said these look like healthy chips, uh, especially since I started with that pilot hole. He says you won't get a long string just yet. He also said since it's kind of a cast deal, it could be how the chips will turn out, but he says these look good. So I take that as let's keep going. All right, guys, so we have our hole right here. Give you kind of peek down inside. Now, just a quick sidebar. One of the reasons, if you haven't guessed by now, you wanna do this with your third member out of the truck is all these shavings, some do end up inside the case. And that's the kind of thing you don't want rubbing around your gears because it could cause damage. So anyway, I got my pipe tap right here. We're gonna start straight and true. And yes, I am using this uh, 16 millimeter wrench to spin it because I don't have a tap handle big enough for this thing. And basically what I'm trying to do is get it set straight. And I'm gonna spin it for a couple of turns as I do so. And when I feel like I've got it set is when I can actually go to town and start tapping the threads. And when I do start doing that, I'm actually not gonna go in continuous motion. I'm gonna do it back and forth. 
So, here we go. Alright guys, so you can see, I've stopped tapping for threads and I've basically taken my plug and threaded it in. Now, it's, th it's going in nice and easy and then I reach that point where it kind of has stopped, okay? That's how I know I haven't tapped threads deep enough and I need to get back and keep tapping some more. So just a good rule of thumb, it's good to stop, tap for your threads, and then come back and check. Especially since this is national pipe thread, it actually tapers. So unlike uh, traditional threads where they're straight and you'd get more depth with each pass and then also for your plug, this is gonna take a lot more depth to get this thing to kind of sink down a little bit more. So always check as you go. All right guys, so a quick check-in. Here's where I'm at with the plug. And trust me, it's been taking me probably five to seven minutes to tap those threads. So yeah, it's kind of a time commitment. Here's my tap. I mark the side. So that's how deep I've taken it thus far. So right below that marker line is as deep as I've had to send this to achieve this. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further. I kind of want it flush and then we'll call it a day. All right, guys. So I finished tapping for our plug and I took the liberty of installing it because honestly, I'm just super excited to see it. And a couple things to note. So I didn't countersink the plug, so I've let it stick up a little bit rather than stick down because I just don't want an area for dirt and grime to build up around the plug and effectively hide it or make it impossible to remove. The second thing to note is you guys better subscribe to my channel because this thing's so awesome and you're going to want it for later. Uh, before you put this back in your truck, you're going to want to use some thread sealant, Teflon tape, pipe dope or something because gear oil will leak around this plug and you'll have a puddle below your diff. Last thing, everything I've used in the video will be linked down in the description so you can buy yourself the same stuff so you can do it at home. Otherwise, guys, that's all from me. See ya.